On this episode of Game Shack, it's my six month review of the At Games Legends Ultimate Multi Cade Cabinet, plus a few suggestions for At Games to make the machine even better. Coming up next. Hey everybody, thanks for coming on by the Game Shack. I'm your host, JDV, here for EvilGeniusEntertainment.com. Before I go any further, if you're new to the channel, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And also be aware that we have a lot of different content on this channel. We have narrative films, we have documentaries, we have little shorts, we have horror movies, action films, our talk show, Two Fat Drunks. We have a bunch of stuff here and we're adding new stuff all the time. So please subscribe and hit the notification bell. I do have an initial impression type review of the At Games Legends Ultimate multi k Cab. So in that review, I said it was the best bang for buck for a lot of reasons. Uh, it has the biggest control deck in the market segment. It has the most varied controls. It has trackball and uh, the spinners. It has the biggest screen at 24 inches, lit marquee, really good sound. It's the biggest machine in the market segment. It's really the only machine that two uh, big size guys can stand around and play something like Street Fighter or Ninja Turtles or something like that comfortably. It has Wi-Fi capacity where you can go online leaderboards, you can download um, firmware, game packs, uh, they have an online game server that you can subscribe to. You can get CoinOpsX, which is a fan developed way to play um, arcade games. You can play at games' own a flashback console and blast adventure dongles and just natively use this these controls to play other games on here, games like Street Fighter. I did a video on that. Um, there's just, you can hook up games like the Nintendo Wii on this, and if you put your sensor bar here, then you can use this um, essentially as your TV set. So there's a huge amount of flexibility, and I think you can still get this game for $500 or $550 at Walmart and that is just an incredible deal. It really, at $600, it's a great deal. It really is the best um, multi-cade way to, to just jump in. And even if you already have other branded cabs, say like something like Pac-Man or Street Fighter or NBA Jam, well, this is a great second or third cab just because it's, there's so much you can do with it and has so many games. But all that said, there's still a few things that I think that uh, ad games could add pretty easily, pretty cheaply. Some you'd think for free. There's three or four ways that the, right now they could make this even a more compelling system to buy into. And the first reason is going to be an adventure. So uh, Adventure is one of the 2600, uh, Atari 2600 games that comes with the... Um, with the ALU and it looks really good and everything but if you can notice the sound is delayed. Listen, I don't know if you can pick this up. Huh? There's not, for some reason there's just a big lag in the sound effects uh, for anything that you pick up when you get attacked by dragons, try to kill a dragon, all that kind of stuff in Adventure. There's a big sound lag. Now, you might be saying, well, so what? But I think that Adventure is one of the great video games of all time, period. It is easily one of the best games on the Atari 2600. And if you're going to have a flagship game from a system like the Atari 2600, I really do think that you should, you should have your emulation be good. Now, to their credit, they have done other emulation upgrades to other parts of the game. They are constantly trying to refine the system, but this is one that I'd like to add to the list. You know, get, get the sound, you know, get the sound right in adventure. Love this game. All right, so speaking of Atari 2600, um, let's talk about, you know, adding more games to this. Unlike the iArcade, you cannot a la carte buy games on the ALU. And one of the things that I would really like to see them do is uh, flesh out the collection on the ALU of 2600 games. So here I'm playing Activision's Pitfall, and I'm playing it using Ad Games' own dongle flashback thing that has, I think there's 20 Activision games on it. Now, the graphics, the 2600 games, uh, these Activision games on this don't look as good as if they were played natively on the ALU. You're still kind of trapped to this dongle, but it is a way to play it. And it also shows, 
Oh no. It also shows that they had a license for these Activision games. So anyway, that would be another suggestion I would have is try to add to that 2600 uh, library. For my third suggestion, and one that I do think is technically possible, I would like to be able to have a little bit more control over the screen on the ALU. Now, if you guys own the machine or if you've seen other reviews, you know that this has uh, maybe the best screen of any of these games at 24 inches. It's definitely the biggest. And almost all of the games look really spectacular on them. I mean, they look very, very good. And if you go, you just hit the menu and it lets you go in here and you can change the aspect ratio. And look, you can even get these uh, the cool bezels. So you really get, do get a lot of control over almost all the games. Just a little bit more um, control over the screen. It wouldn't take a whole lot, but ju just almost treat it though it were a TV screen, particularly like a TV screen from the 80s where just with three knobs, you could change the color and the contrast and the brightness level. I mean, just give us almost like a, like an analog, a digital analog version of that, and I think that'd be cool. In terms of a suggestion that I haven't made, I'm not gonna make because I don't know if it's technically possible, and that's the user interface. It is very clunky. As you know, if you own this game, you very rapidly get your PhD in at Gamesology where you, you can navigate the menu system pretty good after you've owned the game for a couple of weeks. The only problem comes up when someone comes over to visit you and wants to play the games or maybe your wife wants to come down to the arcade and she hasn't played this game a whole lot. You do have to kind of sit with them to kind of guide them through the menu a few times. Again, it's not a big deal. I know they have a better operating system, at least in my opinion, on their um, flashback console. I don't know if they can actually do this. Just kind of like my suggestion for the contrast and the brightness control stuff. I don't know if it's technically possible. So, I mean, maybe I'm a little out of bounds for uh, suggesting it, but there you go. So to wrap up this review, would I still recommend this machine in July 2021 moving forward, particularly for a price tag between five and $600? And that answer is, heck yes. It's still the cornerstone of my arcade. It is the one machine that I would recommend anyone buy who wanted a multi-cade, you might not dig the multi-cade uh, approach or you might already own another one like the arcade, then the need for this maybe diminishes, but it still has the biggest control deck and it's still gonna deliver you every time the best um, two-player experience just in terms of the types of controls and the size of the deck, just, just the physical size of the machine. So if you like this kind of content, please give me a thumbs up on the way out. It really does help the channel, helps me, it helps motivate me to get these videos out. Um, be aware we have all the types of content too, like the movies and stuff, so go check that out. Love each other. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the Game Shack. Mwah! A little testies, testies. One, two, three. Be sure to visit EvilGeniusEntertainment.com for exclusive content, swag, casting call news, and much, much more.